Hello and welcome to Green Angle, the show that explores the environment we live in and the ecological problems we face while proffering sustainable solutions. I am Ugochi Olibo. Today we are in Badagri to meet an artist who is making so much from recycled waste, including a building. Let's go meet him. Your art is very different. Tell us about what you do and let's look at what you do. Show us a bit of, a bit of what you do. What I'm trying to do here is I'm asking questions. If we use the indigenous materials in the environment, can we save the world? This definitely has to do with also, I'm talking about the laws of nature. Okay, so these are made from waste. These are recycled materials, wow. you know. Found objects around the environment, I pick them and you pick them up. And when I'm walking, they come to be a part of the fusion. Wow. You know, oh, okay. Part of the narrative. And this one too? Now, these are my new works. Mm -hmm. I am trying to, because I'm known more as a photographer, I shoot objects, piece of object on the ground as I walk. Mm. It's been there, that is called the unseen wall on the ground and now moving this object from the ground wow. to a canvas wow. to create a narrative. Yeah. It has to do with the sea, the water, you understand. But there's a balance that is always tilted by one particular mm -hmm. figure, and that is man. man. So man tilts the balance in everything. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be an equilibrium, a world so beautiful. And but perfect. you look at the pollution, look at the dredging activities, okay. the oil dredging I was going to say, this is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> so you can okay. see, it's like the offshore. Yeah, the offshore, the, the, okay. The offshore drilling process is going on, but mm -hmm. we talk about man. Man is always the upset of the balance. Mm -hmm. so man destroys everything. Totally. Absolutely. It's man. Man is the biggest problem. This was just the normal malina, but we have to weave this using a cotton yarn mm -hmm. thread to do that. Okay. You know. Found where? No, I picked things from the environment. <laughs> You're talking about the water hyacinth, that's what I'm wearing now here. Yeah. You're wearing a water hyacinth, did you make it yourself? Of course, yes. You made it yourself? Yes. Wow. So you can see from, from the same material, so we are trying to use that which you see as water hyacinth to explore them into ropes. So wow. this is actually an ex experimental platform. Wow. So all you see, we are experimenting with every material you see here. You can see the, the, the local bamboo is what we use mm -hmm. for the doors. Yes. You see that. So and I'm seeing the glass feelings. Exactly, yeah, which comes upcycled from upcycled glass. Exactly, waste. upcycled glasses from everywhere, you know. You, you can see the, the process. Bottles. Yes. So, this is what we're doing here. We are trying to recycle materials, but going back. You but, know, and this is plastic. That's plastic. This one what is you, plastic yes, bottle. plastic. If you, you pick around from the streets, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is beautiful. Stepping in here, one will be marveled and trying to understand or get into your mind. What inspired this life? This is called Alexander Academy of Arts. This started three years ago. It's a research process. I'm working on sustainable materials, using indigenous materials in architecture. Okay. It's a form of a renaissance going back to how we were in former time. I'm asking question, if we use this material today, how suitable are these materials in the lives of the people, in exploring their potential and application in the lives of the people? Okay. So these materials are all here lying waste and nobody is working on them. So people should start asking questions. So I ask this question because I want to use the materials to ask questions as an artist. Mm -hmm. The artist's mind is always thinking of exploration. Mm -hmm. 
new concepts coming to you and you are asking questions, deeper questions. But the work I do is definitely on the environment. So I use everything within the environment I can see, especially that which is organic and natural, you know, to ask questions. Okay. So basically you also go about picking waste or supposedly waste materials to make your pieces. Exactly. Because I started first as a photographer. I go on the street looking at materials embedded on the earth and I take images of it. That series is called Unseen War. But in going through this, you know, one material, one object could spark off ideas. And as an artist, you're always like being bombarded with new ideas and new concepts that you're going on. But because I work with the environment, I'm thinking, what are the ways to express, to show people the detriment, the danger of indiscriminate, you know, uh, dumping of refuse or objects, you know, that clogs the egg pores. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking these questions using my art, mm -hmm. you know, but silently also talking to the people of the ill effect of such, you know, behavior to the environment. Okay. So you told me that this is like a community project. Yeah. Let's talk about this. How, 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 how are you working with the community here? This is very far away from civilization, in quote. How are you working with the people here? Well, like I said, three years ago, I, I passed through here. I moved from Lagos. I decided the chaos of Lagos was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. And it was too choky for an artist to just stay at a particular place. Mm -hmm. And the same routine day in, day out, the traffic jam and all. The, as an artist, I wasn't finding that freedom to express myself. So I decided to move over to Badagri. When I came into Badagri, I found that Badagri was a beautiful place to be. You know, actually this is where artists are supposed to be because the freedom is too wonderful. Mm -hmm. A lot of materials to explore as artists. So nature I too. Yes, nature. So I decided to pitch my tent here. So when I came in here, I decided to start this as a hands-on approach for the youth. I found that the best way is to allow the youth to engage themselves in activities. So much as I would use my own funds to do this, because there's no external funding, you yeah, cannot really no bring the youth, at, you know, to make it an everyday activity. That's the major challenge. That is the challenge, funding. yes, that's the challenge. Okay, so you've been featured in several publications around the world and you've exhibited around the world. Tell us about your project so far. Well, um, like I said, my work is on the environment. I use photography. I'm a multimedia artist, so to speak. So I use photography first as a point of departure. So, but in going through that, I also do installational work. Like I said, this building is not a building, it's an installation. So if you look at it, you can see the recycled materials which we pick around. Yes, I've shown outside this country in, in shows and exhibitions that has to do with the environment. Mm -hmm. There are activities of the art also that talks much about the environment. So like cities of the future, the like, future? Exactly, yeah. like I belong okay, to... Okay, so let's, let's take, take a look at some okay, of these. Art cities of the future. Exactly, 21st century avant-garde. Okay. Yeah, I mean, meaning that there are people who are doing something extraordinarily different from the normal concept of what art is all about. Okay, so, I can see your name yes. here, Charles Okuruke. And yes. this one is for the Sustainable World. This is for Sustainable World. You are this featured here too. In Bamako, Mali. Okay. There's a biennial of photographers from the whole of Africa, you know, that will converge in Bamako, Mali. Mm -hmm. So I also showed here for a Sustainable World. This has to do with the climate, global effect, mm -hmm. you know. Photography was used as the media of that expression mm -hmm. to ask questions, wow. you know. That is what photography does here. Okay, and so this other one is Earth this Matters. This was Earth Matters by, published by Carrie Melbourne. This is for, at the Smithsonian, the African Museum. Okay. You know, so I, I featured here also with other Nigerian photographers all over the world in Africa. People came in to talk about Earth as a material, you know, and how, you know, we, we as people, you know, Should deal with it. Yes. Okay. So you just wanted to leave the madness of city, the city, yeah. and move to this place. Yeah. How has it been so far? Do you feel really connected to nature? How long do you intend to sustain this lifestyle? I am here already. This is my studio. 
what you say is that it's very difficult because to be very sincere, you think that Lagos being a stone troop and Badagri being here, there should be that connection, that exchange to make the city more vibrant. Badagri is still a little bit cut off from civilization. So coming here to live is like you totally being cut off from that point of civilization, the contact with people. When I invite friends to come, they keep telling me, ah, Badagri is too yeah. far now. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So it's been a disconnect sort of. I see you have lots of animals here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about them. You, you live with your, your dog and your cat. I, I have nine cats. Nine cats? Yes, yes. They, okay. They could be here watching at you somewhere. <laughs> and a dog is my best friend. Just straight to me one night like this. and was Straight crying. dog? Yes, just came like a puppy. Wow. In the night, I was crying, crying, crying. So I came out, opened the door in the night, you know, and saw it and picked it up. In the morning, I started going out looking for the owner. Finally, I saw the owner, and the, the man just told me to take the dog. Wow. So he's been with me here. His How name many is, years? It's been it's a year plus now. What's the name? His name is Dusty. Dusty. A dusty boy. <laughs> <laughs> it was of his color. Dusty, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because of the color, they have the dusty color. So do you sell your furniture? Yes, I do. And this looks like a light. No, these are lamps. Yes. Lamps. Yes, yeah. these are all lamps. You can see. Wow. I make lamps also. You know, wow. steal from the recycled materials yes. from the environment. Yes. So these are lamps you see. This also is a service I'm working on. It's called the cocoon service. It looks like it's a, they're all cocoon. Yes. So I go around, like I said, when I go around, I see how insects build cocoons. Yes. You know, and I study their methods, how they gather materials, this. the branches, and all those things, and I come back to replicate this that, you know, using them. And you can see that they now come in to build their own cocoon yes. on it. I've seen you see, so. you see some wolves <laughs> coming now to live and build. So there. what material is this? The, what is this one? What material is this? This, this is um, tissue paper. Tissue paper with acrylic glue. Wow. You know, then with um, these uh, fine twigs, mm. fine twigs in you know around the bush area. You okay. know, I pick them up. You know, whatever that is interesting yeah. to me as forms, I use them. <laughs> It's really hard to imagine that this entire building was made out of thrash. It goes to show that there's nothing impossible for man to achieve as long as you can imagine it and if it's driven by passion for the environment and for so much more. That's our program for today. Remember to send your comments and suggestions using the addresses on your screen. And if you do have a green project or idea, send us a two-minute video or photo and we'll help you share it with the world. I am Ugochi Oluwo. Bye now.